Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about the antibiotic ticarcillin. So we're going to talk about what ticarcillin is, what are some of the bacterial targets of ticarcillin, we're also going to talk about the mechanism of action of ticarcillin, and we're also going to talk about the side effects and contraindications to use of ticarcillin. So to begin, what is ticarcillin? Well, it is a carboxy penicillin, and because it's a penicillin, it is a beta-lactam antibiotic. Here is an image of ticarcillin, and this area of the molecule is actually the beta-lactam ring. And here's also another portion of the um, tricarcillin uh, molecule. And you can see here that um, it's a carboxyl group. And we'll talk about why this carboxyl group is important a little later on. Now, tricarcillin is a third generation broad spectrum penicillin. It's in the same generation as carbenicillin. So ticarcillin and carbenicillin are very similar in their actions. So what I'm talking to you about in this lesson would, um, would similarly apply to carbenicillin as well. So what are some of the targets of ticarcillin? Well, ticarcillin, because it's a penicillin, um, it has activity against gram-positive aerobic cocci, but not staph. So it has effects on strep or streptococcus, but not staphylococcus bacteria. But its main uh, use or main utilization is for gram-negative aerobes. Some of these include Proteus, Enterobacter species, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And these are considered the PEP or PEP. So um, remember uh, that ticarcillin is widely used uh, for PEP, Proteus, Enterobacter species, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. It also has effects on other uh, bacteria as well, Haemophilus influenza, E. coli, but it does not have um, or it is not used for Klebsiella, so it is not effective against Klebsiella bacteria. So again, for ticarcillin, its main use is for gram-negative aerobes, Proteus, Enterobacter species, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So what are the, what's the mechanism of action of ticarcillin? Well, ticarcillin can only be used through IV or IM, so intravenous or intramuscular. It can be um, utilized with uh, clavulinic acid, so clavulinic acid can um, uh, inhibit beta-lactamase of certain bacteria can expand its spectrum. So with um, ticarcillin and clavulinic acid, this uh, combines to form ticarclav or timentin. Now, the main mechanism of action of ticarcillin is to inhibit bacterial cell wall synthesis like other penicillins. It prevents cross-linking of peptidoglycan during cell wall synthesis and it binds to multiple penicillin binding proteins again similarly to the other penicillins and it is a third generation um, broad spectrum penicillin and that means that um, along with carbenicillin it has an increased ability to penetrate porn channels of gram-negative bacteria that is why it's so um, good for gram-negative aerobes so it has an increased ability to penetrate the porin channels of gram-negative bacteria. And because it has that carboxy or carboxyl group, it increases its spectrum of activity. And it has an increased spectrum of activity because it increases its resistance to chromosomal beta-lactamases. So the way in which the, um, the, way in which the chemical structure of ticarcillin is, um, actually prohibits or increases its um, ability to evade the uh, chromosomal beta-lactamases of those PEP uh, bacteria, again Proteus, Enterobacter, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So these are all important um, factors in the mechanism of action of ticarcillin. So what are some of the other considerations of ticarcillin? What are some of the side effects and some of the other um, contraindications to use? Well, some of the contraindications to use include um, 
any previous ex experience of a patient um, that the patient might have had serious hypersensitivity to ticarcillin or other beta lactams, um, including anaphylaxis or Stevens Johnson syndrome. So these would be totally um, contraindications for ticarcillin use. And some of the adverse reactions of ticarcillin use include um, some cardiovascular side effects, including local thrombophlebitis. Um, this is typically um, when ticarcillin is uh, is administered through IV. There's also central nervous system reactions, including confusion, drowsiness, headache, seizures, and myo myoclonus. There's also dermatological uh, reactions like uh, rash. There's also endocrine effects like hypernatremia, hypokalemia. There's gastrointestinal effects such as diarrhea and nausea. There can be hematologic reactions, including decreased hemoglobin and hematocrit. Uh, bleeding, hemolytic anemia, eosinophilia, uh, leukopenia, neutropenia. There can be hepatotoxicity, increased serum ALT and AST, jaundice, anaphylaxis again, as we mentioned before, Jarrett's uh, Herxheimer reaction, and there can be other miscellaneous reactions to ticarcillin arthralgia myalgia. So, joint pains, muscle pains, abdominal pain, chills, chest discomfort, fever, flatulence, etc. So. Um, many of these adverse reactions are, are rare, but again, these are all possible reactions to ticarcillin, although again, all are, um, all are rare in, um, in their uh, prevalence. So anyways, guys, this was just a quick lesson, a quick introductory lesson on ticarcillin. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.